Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to fix problems that you're having with the selection brush in a super easy way. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you very much for that. So by the way, please watch the full video. I give you secret sauce throughout the video. So this is going to be amazing. And we want to zoom in here on the arm of this really cool portrait. So what you can see here is the arm is a little bit blurry which is okay. The background is even more blurry, which is also okay. And the arm and the background have similar color values. And these three factors make it complicated for Affinity Photo to find a good selection in this case. So let's zoom out here a little bit and then I will only select this part of the arm as a sample so you can see what I'm talking about and how to fix that problem. So on the left side, I have selected my selection brush. I set it to the mode add. The size is okay. And now I will simply paint on that. And you can already see there are some problems with the selection. Whoa, that snapped out pretty big. So I want to click on subtract here. Let's do it like that. And you can see, well, this is cleaning it up a little bit. That's actually not too bad. There is popping into the inside so we can go into the other direction. And it looks like it's actually not that bad a selection. Here we have a little bit of a problem. So let's go here. But in a second, you will see that the selection is not as good as it looks on the first side. So let's click on refine here. You can see now this pink area here is actually not selected. To see the real problem that's going on here, pay attention to that area down here that says preview and there switch from overlay to black and white. And here you can see the actual problem. All these areas here, you can see there is fragmentation in here or pixelation. You also have these kind of smoky, foggy areas from the selection also down here. It's looking like there is fog coming off the arm here. You have a little bit of light going on uh, from the chair he's sitting on. And there is some texture from his jacket, also part of the selection. And now, of course, you can go here with these different adjustments for the brush, like with matte, with foreground, background and feather, all these kind of things. And you can say, OK, this is foreground and then this is background. It can get backwards and forwards as often as you want, but it's a lot of work and probably this will always end up in something that's not exactly what you want to have. So I want to suggest to you to simply click on apply. So you have this selection, it's not perfect, but it's a good starting point. Now here is the easy solution how to fix that. With the selection still active, click on the mask icon down here where your layers are down here click on mask so this is creating a mask and you now can see what the selection actually is click on Control d on your keyboard to deselect and to get the black and white view again that we had a second ago hold your alt key and then click on the mask layer and this will give you this view so you can actually see what is going on and this is super extra helpful for us because now we can use a simple paintbrush to actually paint in or out the areas we don't want to use. So make sure on the brushes that you are using a basic brush that is round and maybe also a little bit blurred. So you can select this one, for example. And then I would also suggest you click here on more and you maybe reduce the spacing a little bit so you don't have these kind of lines that are going on here. See, this makes like pip, 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 pip. there's a little bit of spacing between each step because there's a brush is actually a stamp that's going like this and we want to have the spacing smaller. So this is also important to know that. All right. So now that we've done that, we can go back here. And of course, when we click on any kind of other layer, we see our full picture again. And now with the mask select, it's pretty important. I mix this up sometimes too. So it's another part of Secret Sauce. Please make sure that you have the mask layer selected because if you paint on the other one, you're just painting on the picture in black. That doesn't do anything. All right, so select the mask. And now you can see black will hide the stuff and white will make the things visible. So that's really easy to understand. And all the other values, the gray values in between, 
will make it a little bit more or a little bit less visible, right? Okay, if we now understand that, we can go in here, zoom a little bit in here, and then, for example, you can say, I don't want these areas here. So you can paint over these areas. You can see how quick and easy that is to just clean up these areas. It will save you a lot of time, a lot of nerve, where you normally go crazy on all these kind of things and why they don't work. But here you can see, super easy, just paint around a little bit. If you are in confusion, what is actually in there, what is not in there, again, Alt and click on the mask, you can see that. And I can see, ah, oh, there's some areas and here's some stuff going on. I don't want that. And there's a little thin line here, don't want that. So just take your white and then you improve your selection a little bit like so. If the brush is too blurry, just reduce the hardness or make it harder. And then you can again go in here, make a selection. And of course, if you have an iPad or if you have a tablet, this is going to be that much easier. Now, I want to show you another secret sauce, how to turn a circle into a straight line. Woo! Yeah, you can do this a little bit of magic. You can just click like that. And of course, this is round now. But if you go now black and you go like this, uh-huh, I shave this off, I shave that off. And now suddenly I have a pointy area and you can exactly decide what you want to include, what you don't want to include. And this is also the beauty of this. So if you think about your picture, if there is something like, for example, the jacket has here some leather stripes that are coming out in the background, you don't want to have that in your selection, you can simply paint that out. This is how easy and useful this is. So there's a lot of possibility to really, really make your mask very, very good looking. And here's another piece of secret sauce. Like this episode is really filled with secret sauce. If you have your brush and you move it over this area in white, it gives you a preview of what is going on below. So you can actually see what is going on here before you paint, if you want to include something, if it should be included or not. For example, with this little bump here, you can see what is that exactly? Do I want to have that? Do I not want to have that? So um, I don't want to have that. So you switch over to black and then it's just uh, paint it out a little bit and then go for white and then paint it in from the other side a little bit. And there you go. You have done your selection. So that's super easy. Now I want to show you another trick that's really important. So you can say, hey, this is easy because, of course, all the edges are straight. But what am I doing if they are not straight? If I have another kind of effect or even there is hair stuff like that how am i doing that well the good thing is we are working with the brush here so you can use any kind of brush this is pretty amazing if you think about it so go over to brushes and affinity photo comes with a certain assortment of brushes so for example you have acrylics and you have dry media so for example we can take this brush and if we, you can see how this looks it has these kind of points here. So I can paint over this and it has these kind of edgy outsides. So if I switch my color over to black, for example, I can paint on this, I can make it invisible. And I can also go in here and make a selection like this. This can be useful for certain cases, for certain kind of effects like erosion or stuff like that that you want to have here. And another thing you can do here is, of course, you can simulate any kind of material, any kind of thing. And this... And here's the point, this is getting now a little bit more advanced. So you don't have to do that if you're not as advanced. But I still want to show you what you can do with this, how powerful this is. Up here, we have an area with hair. Okay, so if you want to make a hairy selection, of course, you're not going to hit every single hair. We don't often need that. But to make a mask that looks like hair, you can use a hair brush. You can download free brushes from the internet. Most of them are Photoshop brushes, so you have to adjust them a little bit. So, for example, I downloaded one that says Powerful Fur Brush. And you can see when I select this, this actually looks like hair. And I can paint with this on here. But first of all, this is too big. And secondly, it's going into the wrong direction. So let's make a new layer here, turn this black. So we are seeing what we are doing. And let's make this a little bit smaller. Uh, that's actually too small. You can see now if I paint with this, this is kind of giving me a random rotation of hair, which mm, is kind of good maybe, but it's not exactly what I want. What is if I wanted that 
uh, hair to follow a certain shape, a certain curve. So I want to show you how to do that. And like I said, this is a little bit advanced. So you go here on more and first of all, you can adjust here again the spacing that you want to have. That's pretty important. And then you can go to dynamics. I have made an extra video that explains these settings if you search my channel or I will actually link it under the video. In this case, we want to have the rotation chitter as it's called and I want to push this up to 100% and then I want to have this not random but actually following the direction of my brush and now these are going that way which is not ideal if I want to paint a curve so I want to turn this so it's going sideways like this whoops that's actually a bit too much like that and now if I paint with this you can see that the hair is actually following that area. So now I can make a selection where the hair is actually following that area, that kind of curve that I want to select and see how super powerful that is. So let's undo this here. And then we go over to our mask. And now if I paint this in here and I say, I want to follow this area here, you can see that I can, for example, paint in a mask here on that object that looks like there is a hairy edge. And now if I alt click on that, you can see this is not actually hair. This is artificial hair that we painted in here. And this can be super useful for a mask, but also if you want to paint hair onto an object, onto a head, stuff like that. So this is incredibly powerful to create your own masks and own mask effects and clean up masks. You can see up here, this is still the area where Affinity Photo tried the selection brush. And this down here is where we did a clean up on the selection. You can see how clean that is and how much we can improve the selection to get exactly what we want with that. Thank you very much for watching. Maybe you want to join my Facebook group or follow my newsletter where you get amazing updates and what's happened over the week. So really good way to stay up to date. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.